Peter and his friend Charlie are both in their teens. Both of them are growing, but their growths are different. While Peter's muscle mass is increasing and his height is increasing, Charlie's tummy is. Well, this difference in the body structure is because of the difference in the diet. While Peter takes a balanced diet consisting of all the essential nutrients such as carbohydrate and proteins, Charlie literally lives on these fattening food like chocolates, ice cream, cheeseburgers. So what do these fattening food contain? Well, they contain a lot of fat in them. So these fattening food like ice cream, chocolates, they have a lot of fat content in them. So these fat, they get stored under our skin or around our internal organs within the adipose tissue. So adipose tissue forms a layer of fat under our skin and around our internal organs. This thick layer of fat provides us with insulation. It helps us maintain the body warmth. And that is the reason polar animals like seals and walruses have such a thick layer of fat under their skin. Because they have to survive in extremely cold temperature. So this layer of fat that is present under their skin provides an insulating layer preventing excess of uh, body uh, warmth loss. So uh, the animals stay warm even in cold climates. Now, these fats are stored around internal organs also. See, they are stored around the kidneys. These are the fat that gets stored around the kidney. This fat layer forms a cushioning uh, effect to the internal structures, thus protecting them from any mechanical shock. The adipose tissue, which contains the fat, they form a padding around internal delicate organs like the kidney or the liver to protect them from mechanical shocks. Now, Charlie was becoming increasingly overweight. Now, we have seen that fats helps us provide insulation to the body against extreme cold and it also protects the internal organs against mechanical shock. But we also have to remember that fats get stored in the body. In Charlie's body, fat was getting stored in greater amounts. So it was being extremely difficult for him to move around or to do any kinds of physical exercise. So the doctors asked him to reduce the fat content in his body. For that, they advised Charlie to reduce quantity of food consumption and they also advised him to do physical exercises regularly. Now, Charlie wondered if he did not take sufficient amount of food, then where would he get the energy to perform these rigorous physical exercises? So exercise requires energy, but Charlie was asked to reduce the amount of his food intake. So what would provide him with this energy? Well, the fat that is stored in Charlie's body will break down upon exercising and that broken fat will provide Charlie with the energy to exercise. 
one gram of fat will approximately provide charlie with 9.3 kilocalories of energy so charlie's weight will slowly reduce because he'll lessen the amount of food consumption plus he'll exercise and the energy that is required for exercising will come from the broken fat that is already present in his body so the function of fat apart from insulation and protection of internal organs is also to provide energy to the body for the various activities now we've discussed this earlier that the cell membranes of both plant cells and animal cells are made up of a structure known as lipoproteins so lipoproteins are made up of lipids and proteins now notice the structure of these lipids or fats see they have a head and then they have two tail like structures there is a head and there is again two tail like structures so apart from providing insulation protection and energy to the body fat also helps in the formation of cellular structure as in the cell membrane now let us look into the structure of a fat it has a portion which is known as the head which is composed of glycerol and the tail is composed of fatty acids now these glycerol and fatty acids are they are all composed of carbon hydrogen and oxygen look at their structure this is the structure of glycerol see it has carbon hydrogen as well as oxygen similarly in case of fatty acids there are carbon hydrogen as well as oxygen so fats are made up of carbon hydrogen and oxygen in the form of glycerol and fatty acid now it has been recently surveyed and seen that the people of united states of america are becoming increasingly obese because of their lifestyle and their eating habits and it has also been seen that with increase in obesity there is a greater chance of heart attack in the usa so what is the connection between the increase in obesity and heart attacks well these people they literally live on junk food now junk food has a very less amount of essential nutrients but what they have in a large amount is fat and in this fat remains dissolved a molecule known as cholesterol so what does a cholesterol do the cholesterol which is present in the fat of these junk foods they get deposited in our internal vessels see this is a blood vessel the cholesterol that is present in these junk food they get stored on the walls on the inner walls of these blood vessels narrowing it down see this is a normal blood vessel but when cholesterols are getting deposited the blood vessel is becoming narrower so if the blood vessel becomes narrower there will be reduced blood flow and that is the reason the heart collapses and a person gets a heart attack it is because of the cholesterol depositions on the inner walls of the blood vessels not just heart attack excess fat can also lead to diabetes and metabolism problem 
so let us all say no to junk food junk food provides us with energy momentarily but they lack all the essential nutrients that we require for a healthy body what they have in excess amount is fats and cholesterol and these fats and cholesterol if taken in a large amount can make us very sick and people can even die of heart attacks